I'm Glauco, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming. I know it's cold outside <laughs> and it's rainy too, so thanks for keeping me company this afternoon. And uh, I'd like to check your names, please. Could you please let me know what your names are? So I'm Glauco and you are? Olivia. Olivia, nice to meet you here, Olivia. Yes, and Valkyria, nice to see you too. Ligia, good to see you here too, Ligia. Mike. Mike, yes. One syllable, as easy as that, Mike. Um, yes, I was going to ask you next uh, if, I mean, where are you from originally? Toronto. Toronto. Okay, how long have you been in Sao Paulo? 28, 29 years. All right then, it's been a long while. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right then, yes. I've heard a number of stories similar to yours, Michael, so yeah. I, I hope it's been a happy time. In São Paulo. It's, it's been a ride. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right then. And I changed my personal viewpoint on teachers. All right. Myself. Uh huh. Because I wasn't a teacher in Canada. Mm -hmm. You didn't become a teacher until you came to Brazil. All right then. Yes. Great. I mean, uh, I'd like to know a little bit more about your teaching experiences. So, uh, would you please just let me know, do you have a regular teaching job? Yeah, I've always had students. Yes. Since I come here. All right, then. Since I come here. Word okay. of mouth. Mm -hmm. That's it. I don't do any advertisement, nothing. All right. They just flock to you. <laughs> yeah. And because of my wife's circle mm -hmm. that she's in, mm -hmm. uh, she works in the theater with theatrical productions and stuff like that. Yes. And, yeah, and my, yeah, and, the, and in my family, there's doctors in my family mm -hmm. that introduce me to gynecologists that introduce me, and lawyers, and then, you know, students that are in school mm -hmm. to motivate them and lift them up. Yes. The world is small. That's okay. Do you mostly teach adults or teenagers or young learners? I taught all. All. All, all right then. That's okay. I, I, and it's incredible. I've uh -huh. had students for 28 years. Yeah. They don't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> that is fine. That's great. Right now. Oh. You decide to stop. You decide to stop. No, no. I like doing this because it's social lubrication. Yeah, absolutely. That is so true. Thanks for sharing, Mike, and welcome again. Yes, Olivia. Olivia. Yes. I'm retired. Okay. I've been a teacher. Oh, I've been a teacher for 35 years. Okay, are you still teaching these days? No, no, I gave up. About 14 years I gave up everything. Okay. Because uh, now I want to improve myself, to give this time to myself, you know? That's fine. And, uh, yes. Okay, great. Um, I still want to check your teaching experiences, okay, and which age groups you normally teach. So I'll, I'll be checking on you guys. That's Valkyria, right? Yes. yes. Are you regularly teaching too? I'm a Valkyria. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Okay. So, <laughs> welcome to the job. Yes. Do you do you teach small groups or one to one? One to one private. Classes. Okay. Private classes. Okay. Uh, are you planning on going to a school someday and also get a regular a regular teaching job? Yeah. Great. Cool. And uh, I'll get back to you in a second, Ligia. Right? Yes. Do you also have a teaching job, Ligia? Yes. I teach at CNA. Okay. Uh, young learners. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have a preferred age group? No, not really. You love everyone. Everyone is welcome. <laughs> that is right. Uh, what's your name, please? Isaac. Isaac. Okay, nice to meet you again. Do you also have a teaching job, Isaac? Yeah. Uh, I graduated in Lincoln. Yeah. 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Then I've been teaching teenagers. Mm -hmm. And now I'm starting also teaching. Business English. All right. And how has it been for you teaching business English? Oh, it's a little bit hard mm -hmm. because you need to, to get used to, to the language of the, of, the, of the business area. Yeah. And also you've got to learn some, you've got to learn about the, the real stuff, what they really do, what the which department uh, mm -hmm. does. And I, it's always been nice because I've been learning about marketing, about 
in many things related to business. Mm -hmm. And I, I also started started a school, mm -hmm. my own school, mm -hmm. some years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been helping me to to get new ideas, to, to improve the business, mm -hmm. how to how to learn from them too. Because when we are, I'm, I'm teaching them the language, but I'm learning from them the techniques that they've learned uh -huh. in their in their area. So All right. we can uh, we can switch this information. It's been good. That's fine. Thanks and welcome again. Your name is? Mariana. Mariana, I'm Glauco. Nice to meet you and welcome. Um, I'm just checking on your experience. So can you tell me if you also have a teaching job? Yes. Um, yes. I've been teaching since 2014. Okay. Um, I graduated from something else. I graduated from marketing. Marketing? Yes. So you changed careers? Yes. All right. Last year I took the All right. Great. Where? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did you take the full time CELTA for five months or. Okay. Yes, the full time CELTA. Mm -hmm. Adults. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You have some young learners group, right, in CNA. Back leisure. Okay, but you prefer to focus on adult learners. Okay, then why do you think this is your preferred age group? All right, then. All right, that is great. Um, Valkyria, in terms of ages, I mean, uh, how old are your students? Do you also teach across levels um, and across age groups? Do you also get young learners or mostly young adults? Ah, okay. So they're like young, young adults. Yeah, getting a degree. Yeah, that is okay. That is great. Okay. Uh, welcome again. Um, I work for Cultura Inglesa São Paulo. I've been working for 20 years. I mean, it will have been 20 years next February. I'm still getting used to the number. It's 20 years working for the same place. So it's been a wonderful ride. And um, I've had a chance to work with young learners, teenagers, adults, exam preparation classes. And um, for the past 10 years, I've also been doing teacher training. So giving talks and training new teachers, novice teachers, training also more experienced teachers. Uh, I'm a CELTA tutor, uh, the course that you, that you took recently. Hello there, come on in, get closer to us, thank you. And uh, so I do regular teaching for the students and I also do teacher training for novice teachers and also more experienced teachers. Um, I took the, the Delta, which we'll be talking about today a little later. I took the Delta, this was like 10 years ago, uh, which then allowed me to become a teacher trainer and to also become a, a CELTA tutor. And last year I completed my master's degree in applied linguistics. So I also do research into teacher education with a focus on identity which is the beginning of our conversation today. We'll be talking a little bit about identity on the part of the teacher and on the part of the students too. All right. I haven't lived abroad per se, because I've, I've been teaching for the past 20 years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I've been abroad for courses, I've been abroad for, for congresses and conferences, but not like, you know, 60 years or, or a year. Straight, no. Maybe. I have been considering doing a, a, a sandwich PhD course which would take me for a year abroad for the research and then back to Sao Paulo but this is next year's plans. <laughs> What's your name please? I'm Fernanda. Fernanda, nice to see you. I'm Glauco and this is everybody else. I'm gonna give you a chance to talk in a second. I'm just checking on your teaching experiences. Can you just let me know where you teach and how long you've been teaching Fernanda? I've been teaching for about uh, four years maybe. Mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. at seven. Now teaching at seven. At seven. Yes. Yeah. And you've been teaching for the past how many years? Five years. All right then. Yeah. Do you teach adults, teenagers, and also young learners? Do you focus on one age group? I focus on uh, adults. Uh -huh. I also have some teenagers. Okay. Do you have a preferred age group? I prefer adults. All right then. <laughs> teenagers, like older teenagers. Older teenagers. Okay then. I also did uh, like this. Ah, okay. Uh, where did you get your degree from? Okay, you come from the south of Brazil. 
Okay then, yes. Do you come from Sao Paulo? Yes. So you come from the south of Brazil and you come from Toronto. Mike, right? Yes, everybody else. <laughs> oh yeah, I suppose so. I suppose it's quite cold. Welcome again. The focus today is for us to talk about professional development in, in ELT, in English language teaching. Uh, basically, we're going to cover four of the most important uh, career paths or goals that you might like to focus on and achieve for the next couple of years. I hope this is going to be useful to you. I hope we can do this in a more conversational style. I don't feel quite comfortable about, you know, just doing the talk and being the speaker. So if we could just do this in a conversational style, you can stop me at any time. Just raise your hand. We can ask questions uh, both amongst yourselves and also questions to me, please. So we can do it in a conversational style. All right. Um, so to start with, we're going to consider this question. Uh, we're going to go back to the days when you guys started learning English as a learner. Mike might have a different story to tell because because <laughs> you're a baby boomer. Yeah, you got Generation X. Yeah. And then you got Millennials. Yeah, and also the boomers. So your story might be slightly different, but everybody else, I'm going to invite you please to consider in which decade uh, you guys started learning English. So take off the teacher's hat for a few seconds, put on your student's hat for a few seconds, and let's, let's think about when you started learning English, the first classes you took, the first courses that you guys took when you were learning English. And uh, I'd like to know in which decade this was. And also, I'd like to know in which context you used English outside class. So when, when lesson was over and you went back home or somewhere else, where did you use your English as a learner? So let's forget about today. Can I give you a couple of minutes for you to tell each other and I'm going to be listening to you as you share your stories back to your students' days. Let's get you three, Mike and the girls over there. You can work in a group of four possibly, then you can tell each other your stories and experiences. Shall we do that? Thank you. Yes, so let's check it together. Um, I started learning English in the, in the early 90s, as a very young boy in the early 90s. Some of you did too, right? In the early 90s or the 80s or back then. So in my case, when I left my grammar translation class, which had no focus on conversation. We didn't have any chance to get a word in English. It was purely grammar, translation, texts, uh, in terms of approach. And then most of my time I spent listening to music in English, normally American pop music, and uh, trying to understand the words they said, and I wouldn't get any word. It was so frustrating, so frustrating. I used to borrow those you know, LPs and those vinyl black records from my older sister. And then I would just uh, cross my fingers that there would be a booklet inside with actually the words to the songs in English. So I could listen and follow the words. Many, many times there was no booklet inside. It was very frustrating trying to understand the words of the song and not being able to. And not having the, the lyrics booklet inside the, the records. So to me, listening to music was basically the only possible way for me to get any contact with English outside class. What about you guys? In which context did you use English outside your English courses, whichever decade you learned your, uh, your first words in English? Music too? Yes. Yes, what else? TV shows. TV shows. TV shows, you were lucky. You were lucky to get TV shows and I didn't get that chance. No. Absolutely, yes. So TV shows in English too? Or what else? Movies, movies in English? Movies. The Portuguese subtitles, yeah, and it's a temptation because they are flashing all the time. They really catch your eye. It's hard not to. Mm -hmm. In what, 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 what else did you do outside class using your English? Games. Playing games. Game. All right. Jamie Okay. <laughs> so playing games in English. Uh, what else? And then when I started traveling. Mm. I started traveling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then the high season. I went to, yes, normally I went to the USA, mm -hmm. different place or India, mm -hmm. so to, speak, to have to speak there. All right, yes, this was a great chance, a great chance to travel abroad. 
TV shows, music, travel, games, any other situations where you guys use your English? Yeah, those little magazines, but the magazine was uh, were for the guitar, who played the guitar. Mm -hmm. And we bought this, I bought this, only to read the, the, the lyrics. Mm -hmm. But they were divided according to the, to the, to the music, you know, mm -hmm. the, for the, the, the players that played the guitar. Yeah. They were divided like this, I bought the... the there's a little magazine okay. like this. Mm -hmm. Not to play the guitar. Okay, <laughs> just just for the reading. Yes, yes. yes. Sports. Following sports? Yeah. Yeah. And then so English was in hockey? Yeah. Yeah. Fishing. That's all right. My yes. Foot, my football team is in English, Corinthians. Okay. The best one, the greatest one. Yeah. All right then. <laughs> Uh, we're doing this because we're, we're going to have to contrast, okay? So our first steps, our first words in English, they were surrounded by these contexts that you are suggesting. We're going to have to go and contrast to what's happening today with our learners. When our learners start their, you know, their first steps and take our first classes, they are living a world which is very, very different from our world. So this contrast has to be taken into account. You want to say something, Isaac? Mm -hmm. Because that was the only the only way we had to, to get access to the language. Uh -huh. But nowadays it's really hard to make these students use these materials. The audio they, materials. We have other other ways to, to have this access. Mm -hmm. And you think it's hard to make them use it? Yeah, they basically they don't use it. Do Do you know what kind of things they want to use? Uh, uh, like videos, music, video clips. Mm -hmm. Most of the time. Yeah. That's all right, absolutely. So, so these days, the world of English surrounding our learners is very different from the world surrounding uh, ourselves back, back in decades. It comes with the book. It doesn't make sense anymore. Because it's just, hey, where am I going to play this? Yeah. It should be, maybe it should come with a uh, flashcard memory. Mm -hmm. Because the CD doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Things have been changing so fast. Yeah, YouTube does, and, and some, some publishers, they will offer you the, the MP3 files to the, to the tracks instead of the CD. Because where, where am I going to play this CD? CDs have become Jurassic already, <laughs> so fast. We are going to contrast using English then, when we started, and learning English now, I mean, and using your English as a learner. So back in our days, most of us, we could only uh, resort to TV programs, and listening to music, and if you were lucky enough, and if you could afford it, then you could also travel. Yeah, you could also go on an exchange program, which was financially beyond many, many families. Um, so if you were lucky enough to be able to afford an exchange program, then you could go abroad for a year, for six months, and use your English in those contexts. Today, basically, yes, of course. So you had an English service yes. at church. Yes, for more than 10 years. But are you telling us that the biggest attraction was the language, not the religion? <laughs> well, because I'm Catholic and they are Protestant. Yes, okay. But, but the greatest attraction was listening to the English minister. Yes, yes. All right, performing the service. Read the Bible in English. In English. I knew okay, Bible. yes, absolutely. Bible was in Latin. Latin. I, I, I took a year of Latin at university and that was so hard. Yes. That was so difficult. Yes. The point of today is our learners, they are in class with us and they have a chance to use the English that we are teaching straight away. They don't have to wait until they go home to listen to the music. They don't have to wait until they go home to turn on the TV. They don't have to wait until the sports channel is on. They can start learning whatever you're teaching straight away. They might be doing that in class, how? You're teaching your class and they might be using English already in front of you, using their mobile devices, right? Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know if you take kindly to this or you know if it really if you take offense, because some of them they are already using English throughout the class. Maybe in a one-to-one -one scenario, like Volkita described, it's harder for the students to actually use the mobile phone in front of you. It's kind of rude, but it's in a group. Definitely, they can simply switch it on and use English immediately. So the question of how quick things are now has a very big impact on why they are learning English. It's much more motivating. Many of us believe it's much more motivating now. They can go home and use English in many contexts on the same day, sometimes during class. And this has changed why basically we are learning English and why we want to learn English. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So this is something for us to bear in mind as teachers. Okay. So we, when we were learners, we had to wait until the chance came to us for us to finally use it. Students have the chance 24 seven day and night. They can do it. They know how to. Okay. And then we are focusing on, on why the world need, why the world needs more English speakers and why the world needs more English teachers, I would say more than ever. Okay, we're discussing this now as we start. Uh, through the internet, laptop computers, tablets, mobile phones, learners and also teachers, all of us included, okay? We all have access to leaders and celebrities, politicians, presidents, pop stars, rock stars, religion, uh, you know, icons, people who actually are using English online on their YouTube channels, on the books they publish, they are using English on the internet, and our students have access to all that. They also have access to adverts, which travel around the globe, on the internet, especially. Television also, but less frequently. So they see adverts, and the adverts are telling them what to eat, telling them what to drink, where to go shopping, what to shop for. The leaders and the politicians, the celebrities are telling them what kind of music to listen to, what kind of choices to make, what kind of hair do you should have. And our learners and also ourselves, we have been bombarded with this sort of thing. And we find it fun. It can be really fun. So English is now traveling around the globe much more quickly through celebrities, leaders, presidents, politicians, adverts and also corporations who tell you what to think, what to wear, where to travel to on your holidays. So basically what I'm trying to say is English has been traveling much more quickly and we have been influenced on our own behaviors, what to eat, what to drink, what to wear, where to go on holidays, how to publish your photos in the best way, makeup tutorials, how to set up your own blog. All of this is happening in English as we teach and as we learn, which is an amazing thing to do. I, as a professional, and because we're all professionals talking, what I'm trying to say here in terms of identity, that I think we should have our eyes open, because all of these people, they are using English to spread their messages and many times impose lifestyles. And for the younger, more impressionable generations, they might simply not be critical enough to question, do I really want to do that? Do I really want to buy or drink or eat that? They might not be able to question. They might simply accept and accept this imposed lifestyle. So to me, one of the most important things about using English as a tool these days is, can I stop and question? Can I stop and ask myself, do I really want to go to all these places that they are telling me to go? Do I really have to buy all the things they are telling me to buy? Let's keep going. Yes. Yes, I was, I was telling you how through the internet, English is being used to many, many times bombard our learners with lifestyles that they sometimes don't really know. It's basically being posed. So to me, why does the world need more English teachers and more English speakers so we can actually receive all this, think about it and question. And if I don't agree, then I can start expressing something alternative. How can I express myself in English through the internet to say that maybe I want to travel somewhere else. Maybe I want to drink or buy or wear something else. So to me, one of the greatest objectives these days for us as teachers is to know that by using English, 
we can defend alternative ideas and uh, which go against dominant ideas which have been traveling around the world so so often by using english uh, we can support the diversity and support the multiplicity that characterize the human existence we are not just one thing we don't just lead one lifestyle there are many possible lifestyles that will suit all personalities so i just think we should be careful and should be open to expressing alternative ideas and not just going with the dominant ones in terms of using english to build uh, your own identity especially on the internet because now we can do that we don't have to accept imposed lifestyles and this was the first part of the, of the conversation today in which I wanted to talk to you about identity and using English uh, in, in this way to construct alternative speeches and discourses and dialogues in which we can go against the flow if that is the case. Hello there, hi. What's your name, please? Fabiana. Fabiana. Welcome, I'm Glauco. And these are the guys in the audience. <laughs> yes, that's Fabiana. Yes. Are you a regular teacher? Are you also teaching? Yes, I'm teaching now since this year. All right. You're a novice teacher. Welcome to the, the job in the area. Thank you. All right. Okay. So this was part one of our conversation. Okay. So why, in my opinion, the world needs more English speakers and more English teachers and how English is being used these days and how we can uh, fit in this, in the whole scenario. Okay. Any questions, any comments, anything you'd like to say regarding this before we move on to our next part? You become a mentor. Tell us more about that, mentor. A mentor is what students look up to mm -hmm. as more than a dictionary, more mm -hmm. than paper. Mm -hmm. A role model. A role model. Yeah. And you got these guys in marketing, Paco Underhill and Martin Lindstrom that put out these books about world changing so fast. They got offices here in San Paulo, New York, Paris, London. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, so, I mean, um, do you mean that as teachers in the class, we can also become role models for the students? Yeah, you are. Yeah, it's, it's inevitable. For mm -hmm. the students, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And yes. the students go back to their schools and tell their, their English teachers, my teacher says this and that. Why? Mm -hmm. Because I refer to knowledgeable sources all the time. Mm -hmm. Books that come out in 2018. Okay. Right now. Yes, out of the oven. And this guy, Steve Pinker, just put this mm -hmm. book out, Enlightenment Now. Mm -hmm. And he talks about everything in there from literacy to women mm -hmm. being persecuted towards societies in the dark ages and the new age of enlightenment now mm -hmm. we're getting into from the millennium. All right, yes, thanks for sharing, oops. Yeah. And it's important to get the student motivated to read books, not old books, mm -hmm. books out now. Yeah, yes, which represent what we are living today. Yeah, yes. you're in the future. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, thank you. What's your name, please? Thiago, I'm Glauco, nice to meet you, and these are the Sorry. guys in the audience. It's okay, it's cold, it's rainy, <laughs> we know it. Yes, as a conclusion to, to this, uh, so basically English will, will help us all to have either a global identity or a local identity. Of course, English will probably open doors for all of us to live a more global identity because it will connect to, to other countries and cultures, adverts, again, as we said before, leaders and corporations. Without English, without some command of English, we will somehow be within the constraints of a local identity. A local identity will allow you only a local life. You'll only have access to local news and what's happening around you which will lead you possibly to no fight for equality because you won't know how to contrast your local news to news from different parts of the planet. So without the awareness of what's happening around the planet, you probably will not fight for better equality. Again, reducing the chances of jobs, which enhance your chances of leading a more fulfilling life. So the whole thing will become much more simplistic. By learning English, 
from us and with us, our learners will probably be able to move to a more global identity. And we do believe that this will give access to technologies, recent publications, a multicultural world where they can contrast what people are doing in other cultures to what is happening in their local cultures. And this will allow for interaction with various ideas, those that they agree with and also those that they don't agree with. And if they don't, how to use English to express why you disagree and why you don't want to be doing those things that have been probably imposed many, many times on us. So English probably will lead to a global identity, which is excellent um, for all citizens of the planet. Okay? Can I try something? Yes, Thiago, right? Yeah, uh, about English, mm -hmm. English. Uh, I like elections, mm -hmm. and I like especially the USA elections. Mm -hmm. They're very exciting. Mm -hmm. And now we are in Brazil, and we're have, uh, having elections now. And something that it, it always surprises me, is some Brazilians, especially the ones that don't speak English, they are unaware of how similar the elections are. Okay. And if you are aware of what's going on in the USA, you can see the similar things between the left and the right, and I think that really help, helps you understand the whole picture. Mm -hmm. And when you have one Portuguese, you, you know, as you said, I think, you, know, you only have the local identity. Mm -hmm. you, know, you, can, you can't really share uh, your ideas to the whole world, mm -hmm. only, only to that little area, you know? Yeah, and possibly because you see, yeah, yeah, the word confined to me makes a lot of sense when you say confined, because without, without the knowledge that people can do things, even politics, even religion, you know, music and TV in different ways, if you can't contrast, how can I make a better choice? You'll be confined to the only choice given to you, you know, so basically you're not making any choices, somebody made the choice for you. We're moving on. We have established, you know, why learning English these days has changed, you know, in terms of importance. And we are moving on to discussing uh, career goals, okay? So in our careers, in ELT, I'll start with the, possibly the two most famous Cambridge Teaching Awards. You might have heard of these teaching awards before, the CELTA and the DELTA. We're going to spend some time talking about the Cambridge Teaching Awards. And then for the second part of the...